Hey guys, what's going on? It's Eli, back with another review video, and that's right, you read the title of what I'm reviewing. Um, yeah, it has been, it has been a little while since I've reviewed a Disney Directive, uh, uh, DVD slash video sequel, um, and, um, and it's been a while since I've reviewed something, you know, uh, from Disney's Aladdin. And especially with the passing of Gilbert Gottfried, I think, you know, with with that and uh, since it's been a while since I've reviewed a directive sequel, blah, 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 I think it's a perfect time to, of course, review, um, and actually is, is uh, the first ever Disney directive video slash DVD uh, sequel. Aladdin, The Return of Jafar. Yes, and this this was the start when Disney was making directive uh, movie sequels that came out on video and DVD. Um, yep, this is what it all started. And with, you know, Disney, t uh, like, Disney Toon Studios later on, you know. Um, and, um, yeah, and I, and because... I guess at the time, yeah, everybody was excited f for a sequel to Aladdin, and, you know, even when, say, like, the trailers came out, like, and the animation, the look of the animation, I, I don't know, like, I guess, I mean, from what I heard and from other reviewers reviewing this, you know, um, and so, yeah, because this, of course, takes place after, you know, what we, you know, what happened in the, in the Aladdin film, and, um, and actually, the opening to it was pretty good, because it just, like, say how, you know, in Aladdin, you got Arabian Nights, uh, you know, play, uh, playing with a few different lyrics. Uh, you know, open sesame, here we go! And, a and that, that, uh, the, that, uh, that version of Arabian Nights would, of course, be part of the intro of the Aladdin uh, series. Um... And of course, like uh, one of like one of like the main villains, Abyss Abyss Mal, if I'm saying his full name right, voiced by Jason Alexander. Like you know him and like his army of thieves. Like they like they're like stealing something and uh, treasures and so on. When Abu Aladdin and Carpet show up and they take that stuff and uh, they return back to the palace and you know, they were actually, like, tossing it around the village, you know, to those that need it, and Aladdin, of course, giving something to Jasmine, and, uh, and at one point, we see out in the desert that, um, we see I Iago, he's, he's getting out of the lamp where Jafar is, and is still in there, as we all remember, you know, at the end of, uh, of the Aladdin film, and Iago's just had enough, you know, you know something, you're nothing without me, what? As Jafar says, and as Iago says, who comes up with all the good ideas? Me! Who does all the work? Me! And J in Jafar, Jafar's response, if it weren't for me, you'd still be in a cage squeaking, Polly, what a cracker! I, I think that's how he says it, and Iago's song number, I'm looking out for me, uh, that's the only song I really remember. That and the song that, which we'll get to in just a couple of minutes. Um, yeah, and this song just basically says that Iago's had enough of Jafar. He, like, tosses him in, like, a wishing well. Uh, well, basically a, just a well, like, not wishing well. And he makes his way to Agrabah. And that's when, it, at one point, he does, you know, meet up with Aladdin. He pretends that he was, like just walking in the desert, just, you know, uh, just exhausted and so on, and that really doesn't work out, and Aladdin and Abu, they, they chase after him, but that's when, of course, they, they meet, they stumble upon, of course, Abyss and his, and his men, and even at one point, Iago does save Aladdin, and, you know, even Iago tells Aladdin that, you know, you owe me, and, yeah, and that's when, of course, you know, Iago, he gets put in, into a cage. And then, uh, Genie is back after traveling around the world, you know, as, 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 just like at the end of the film, when he was, after he was free, he was traveling around the world. And he has his song number two, and, uh, just a montage of, I guess, yeah, stuff that he was doing, like, uh, I think, yeah, what was it, like? I'm trying to remember, like, I think the Great Wall of China was in there somewhere. I I can't remember. <laughs> um, 
and then of course a little bit later you know uh the sultan jasmine you know they find out that aladdin was like keeping a secret from them you know that he was keeping iago locked in and you know even when Ra like raja chases after iago after like something happens between iago and abu when abu was keeping on duty watching over iago um and also yeah the cast the cast of characters of course you've got the return of scott w wanger if i'm I hope I'm saying his last name right. If I'm not, then I'm really sorry. Uh, Linda Larkin as Jasmine. Uh, of course, Gilbert got the late, legendary Gilbert Gottfried as Iago. Uh, and Frank Welker as Abu and Raja, the tiger, of course. Uh, even J and Jim Cummings. He voices, what's, how do you pronounce the name? Ra Razul, I think, yeah. The main leader of, like, the Agrabah guards, you know, that, you know, talk like this, and, you know, street rats, and blah, blah, blah. Um, a few different, of course, a few different cast, uh, changes to the cast. Uh, from Val Betin, he, if I said his last name right, the late Val Betin, he, he voices the Sultan this time, um, and, uh, and actually, Val, he, uh, be, early on, he was the voice of you know, um, Dawson, Dr. Dr. Dawson in The Great Mouse Detective. Uh, so now he voices, um, you know, the Sultan in, uh, this and, like, the, the TV series and, and the King of, the King of Thieves. And most notably, Dan Keslanella voices Genie and re replacing Robin Williams, uh, uh, you know, for this Return to Far and the TV series. But of course, later on, Robert Williams would reprise the role of Genie in uh, The King of Thieves. Um, and you know what, Dan Keslanella? He was good as Genie. Like, you know, he could never, like, nobody could really, like, like, replace Robin Williams and, like, bring, to, like, and what, and what, you know, to put it this, what Robin, what Robin Williams brought to voicing Genie was just magical and just amazing, Okay. And, but don't get me wrong, like, and no disrespect to, to the other, to any, to any of the voice actors who, who have been voicing Genie. They do really good, and they, I'm sure as though they've tried their very best, uh, you know, voicing Genie. So, yeah. And then Dan Keslanella, he does pretty good, too. Uh, he's good, and for this being his debut, voicing Genie. Um, <clears throat> and, um... Yeah, even Genie, just being Genie, and even when things do not seem pretty good, especially between Aladdin and Jasmine, um, <laughs> like, I think, uh, Genie, yeah, he, like, turns into, like, a teapot and, like, pours a cup of tea to cheer up Aladdin, I guess, but, you know, of course not working out, just Aladdin really depressed over this, and Iago, like, going to Jasmine, and he even tells her that he, he saved Aladdin, and then, the second song that I, I do know very well, and I remember very well, too, next to I'm Looking Out For Me is, I'm sure it is titled, you know, Forget About Him, and trying to c convince Jasmine that, of course, you know, that of how much Alad Aladdin loves her, and, like, she's kind of overreacting. I, so, I don't know. But if you've seen the, the movie and the song, you know what I'm talking about. And that's, of course, when Jasmine realizes that, yeah, because... She remembers um, when they what when they first met and what it was what was what it was like for them you know love at first sight etc. And um, things turn out pretty good and you know uh, you know everybody everybody's still not sure on Iago but also I almost forgot to mention this Abyss uh, he finds uh, the lamp where that Jafar is in and Jafar becomes the genie to Abyss and. Abyss has, like, you know, has three wishes, and even, like, his first wish is, you know, finding, like, a sunken ship with treasure, and your wish is my command. And, like, literally, he, he's underwater, and he can't breathe, and yet his, his, his second wish is to, for Jafar to rescue him from drowning, and, of course, he is saving his last wish. Um, and so Abyss and Jafar, they do team up, and, of course, they, like, a plan to take over Agrabah, and I gotta say, Jafar's wardrobe in this is, has, has, has changed, you know, from, from how he was in, uh, the, in the Aladdin film, 
I think almost. Like, it's just the coloring, you know? And I think there's, like, a bit of stripes to his his hat, I think. I, I don't know. Um, but anyways, um, even, like, say, like, Jafar threatening Iago and for, like, threatening Iago to join him once again. And, yeah, and even everybody now s starts thinking that, yeah, Iago is a traitor and betrayed them once again. And even when, say, uh, uh, Aladdin is accused, uh, is framed, that he killed the Sultan and even Jafar pretending and disguising himself as Jasmine. Yeah, and Aladdin is going to be executed. But of course, Iago does save the day, freeing the genie, genie saving Aladdin, and um, they're all you know, going to stop Jafar while Iago, he just, he kind of stays out of it. But that is until Iago does come back and does stop uh, Jafar. And I just love it. Like the first thing he says to Jafar and as he makes his entrance, you know, Jaf hey, Jafar, shut up! And kind of get close to, get, gets close to the camera. And yeah, even at one point, yeah, Iago does get injured, very wounded, but he does manage to defeat Jafar. The thing is, destroy the lamp, and that kills Jafar. And that's what happens. Like, like a, a like a pot of lava. Iago, very wounded. He does manage to kick it with his with his uh, feet. And yep, Jif Jafar is defeated, and everything is back to normal. And then, like almost thinking that oh, Iago is done for, is dead. But no. He's okay, and, you know, he's treated with medical attention, and, uh, the movie had a nice ending, of course, and Iago being Iago, like, just saying a bunch of random stuff, you know, blah, 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 blah. I, I can't remember what he says. But, yeah, uh, Aladdin, The Return of Jafar, it's, it's pretty good, and since this was the, the beginning of Disney making directive video slash DVD sequels, so, and I'm sure that for this film, like, it's mutual, like, people didn't really like it, but there are those that did, and I have a, I think this is pretty good, as I said, you know, as I've been saying, um, and how do I rate this? Good question. That's a good question. Um, why not? Uh, eight out of ten stars. Eight out of ten stars for Aladdin, The Return of Jafar, and what about you guys? Have you seen Aladdin, Return, The Return of Jafar? What do you think of it? What you thought of my review? Leave comments and give this review a like, as always. Um, anyways, and, yep, so with that being said, uh, again, 8 out of 10 stars for, uh, Aladdin, The Return of Jafar. I hope, I hope you guys enjoyed my review of The Return of Jafar. More reviews coming your way. They're gonna be awesome. Keep looking forward, and I'll see you guys in the next video slash review. And, uh, stay tuned later tonight, where we'll be continuing reviewing more Marvel films. This time, um... Uh, it has to do something with a giant green hero. You probably know who it is I'm talking about, so stay tuned for that. So, anyways, so take care, peace out, and rest in peace, Gilbert Gottfried.